Why is he not using the haste and the ward ability? I don't know. But he'll pop it now. Maybe he's waiting for traps. The red bombs. There we go. That's why. That's why he held the ward ability. Hey, it's what on, guys. Welcome back to Clash of Air. We are in the upper bracket quarterfinals for the Clashers Cup. Today we have Tribe Gaming. Obviously, you know them, but you also might recognize some of the players over on Fuching from our defending world champions, JX Tiger, as we come in for this match today. Let's dive into Kronos kicking us off here with a sneaky bat rider. Wall breaks into the town hall compartment and then sends in a couple sneak goblins, triggering traps, and we'll try to snipe off this town hall. Then we'll get ready for the big hero's kill squad with the dragon riders to go in and take out all the splash damage on the base and set up the bats. Notice how many freezes he decided to bring into this. He went in with six freezes and six bats, or six, five freezes and six back spell swing. So that's gonna be a lot of spell support for the bats, but it doesn't leave a lot of spell support for the rest of the force here. He's no rages, no skeleton spells, no, Real protection other than the freezes to potentially use this onto his main force. But he puts in the log launcher, delays it for a little bit there, lets the other uh, heroes work their way in a little bit there, gets the headhunters down to go after the defensive heroes, even protects the headhunters and his heroes with the ward ability, and will get the defensive row champion and then the defensive queen down. He's got the CC pull, headhunters, and a and a, looks like a lava hound pop out of there. War champion continue along the right flank there. The dragon riders have already begun their path into the base, and they actually might even cut off the main force here and Forced him into the core of the base to go after the scatter shots here, but he even sends in one late Dragon Rider from the left side, but it gets hit by two Black Mines, and it does go down early. Now, the King is cleared so far to the right side, and he's got the minions working there. If she can just stay distracted on the puffs for a little bit longer, and he does, he gets that distraction, and he does end up getting the funnel on both sides to drive the queen towards the other scatter shot. But the bats are getting targeted by the scatter shot as the queen engages it. The freeze up the wizard tower. Got another freeze here. That's the last freeze. He has to take this wizard tower down and he gets it. Gets the wizard tower down and he's coasting his way through to the finish here. Pops the invisibility on the last dragon rider and he will lock in the first triple of the war here. Sneaky bat rider. One of the strongest attacks in Clash of Clans. Makes it happen right there. One of my favorite attacks there when you can get to the town hall with sneaky goblins. There's a lot of options that uh, that specific scenario gives you, but he perfectly executes it there and drives his queen to the core of the base to get that scatter shot. I don't know if he would have got it if he hadn't got that scatter shot down there with the queen, because the bats weren't really making their way that direction. But one way or another, Tribe Gaming starts off strong and will send it over to Fuchi as both of these teams try to move on to the semifinals. Lisao from Fuchi is live. We got ourselves a double clone, five invisibility Hydra attack here with Inferno Dragons mixed in, and here comes the blimp. Sailing his way in is an anti-two-star base. He's gonna try to take advantage of the compact core here with whatever's inside of this blimp and all the spell support to go in and nuke that area out. Out comes, what is it? What is it? What's in there? What's in the blimp? Super Archers, double clone up, and will start to rip up the core. Super Archers will take out the first scatter shot there. Lock out of the town hall. While they strike the town hall, they're going to get the damage through onto the scatter shot as well, taking down both of them. He will get the town hall, take it out there. And I think he. Did he have any CC come out of there? Was it a Lava Hound on defense? He's able to destroy with the CC without trying. Nope, there is a Lava Hound. It is over on the far left side. He did end up pulling it, but he seems to have it under control over there. And he's got one more freeze for the back end of the attack here. There's a single Inferno, the Grand Warder statue, and this defensive king on the far back end of the base here. He's got the dragon still alive and moving though, but he puts in the road champion now, taking advantage of the king's tanking, and will sneak his way in and get the synergy by putting them together. Still has his queen ability. The queen is circling around and will join in with the king right behind him. He needs to get the road champion to get the multi-inferno, or needs the inferno dragons and dragons to take that out there, but he's running low on those. It's locked onto the king there with the Inferno Dragons. They'll smoke through him quickly. The RC goes to ability, gets the damage onto the multi Inferno, needs to get the single Inferno down. The queen is on her way through. She can use that freeze. She does, and she will lock it in. Her ability still attacked, and Li Sao gets it done here to open up for Bu Ching. Nice attack here from both teams. Love to see those Super Archer bombs. Very, very, very powerful, especially when they pack a lot of defenses together like that. So if you're looking for a good strategy and you can convince somebody in your clan to activate super archers for you, then you can't really go wrong with this one. Very, very powerful 
and it gets the job done once again. Two triples on the board. I know. Excosis from Tribe Gaming will take the second attack. Starting off with a hog. Just searching for traps there for the flame flicker to begin his path in the base here. Now the flame flicker might get the damage onto this the mortar here by striking the archer tower. Is it actually damaging it right now? Got the clean start in from the right side. I just want to see if that's actually taking damage. Quite. Not quite. Not quite. Feels a little inconsistent whether that ends up dealing the damage or not. But he has a Yeti on standby. So he could throw the Yeti down to tank the mortar. And to take the cat. Okay, now he gets it down. It was doing down. Was it? I don't know. The mortar drops. He drew out some Teslas with the Yeti. So he gets more value while he was guarding himself from the other things they're keeping the flame flickers safe. But the queen, the unit marked her way along the bottom of the base there towards the town hall. Why not the CC? Super wall break over on the top side. Maybe that's for the king entry to the scatter shot. King will deploy over there. He's got one more super wall breaker. I assume he's going to use it for the king. He doesn't necessarily have to, but he does. He does. He will step into the arch tower first. The warden joins with the king. Then have the Royal Champion join it, so they get a little bit deeper in the base door, but he doesn't want the Royal Champion to pass up the King before he gets to the defensive Queen. Headhunter comes down, he can pop the King ability, then use the Warden, a bunch of giant bombs, tons and tons of giant bombs going off of that compartment, but it absorbs every single one of them, gets the Queen down, protects the Headhunters, and his main push continues to the middle of the base there, but the King seems to have other plans. The King is not following with the Royal Champion, and he ended up swagging a jump here, but the Queen, Take it down the town hall with that rage there. She continues to charge. The Royal Champion did continue all the way to the core of the base there. She gets the Grand Warden statue on the backside down. The Dragon Riders that were on the top section were going out to that multi inferno and they did it while the balloons surged their way across the bottom. And he's looking good overall here. He's got a minute left. The Queen Charge is still moving strong. He's got the Dragon Riders that are behind the balloons and he'll even throw down and directly target this air defense with his last balloon and he will get through with the invisibility. The queen continues to circle around here, and he's got it. Tribe Gaming. Next again. A nice start here for this team. King didn't want to cooperate. Swag's a jump. Doesn't matter. Clean house. All right. This is a strong start. I'm uh, curious to wonder what the people across YouTube are thinking as far as this war goes. Which of these two teams do you think will take it? And throw it in the comment section down below. Let me know, and then check back at the end, and and see if you're right. A strong start here. Tribe Gaming. Wukong is live. Here we go. We got ourselves a Super Bowler Smash. He's in the flame thing over the right side. Deploys part of his healers down here with the Warden. Just enough to keep him topped off here through the Archer Tower. And these exterior defenses here. But we're seeing more anti-two-star bases. I'm not sure why... Tribe decided to run anti two star bases today, and we'll see if that trend continues. But right now, we know the Super Bowler Smash is very strong against these style bases, but we'll see if he can make it happen because he is going to path through the Town Hall Poison potentially and then get dumped into all of the defensive heroes in a single floor on the back side of the base. So we'll see how much he can keep alive and move in here, but he puts in a Yeti to go tank the mortar up on the top side. If the continues to make its way through. Yeti might give a little bit of tanking for the multi-mortar there, but it's gonna lock on and start firing away here shortly. No, he's he had a wall break that to took up one shot. Look at the look at the flame flicker here. It, it, <laughs> it finds a bit of safety as it rounds out to the outside wall and now is circling its way in to go get that mortar down. But it never got targeted, so it's still got good HP, and we'll see if it can do anything later on. Although I think it's gonna have all of his targets stolen away as the super bowlers marched her way up the middle of the base here. The queen ends up going to the outside a little bit there. She's veering off. She engages the defensive queen on the left side. Up on the top side, the world champion begins her path in, keeping her distance from the defensive heroes. He gets the multi throw down with the king, but his queen and the super pullers are along the bottom. He'll go invisible with them to keep him protected. Rage them up again. He has his queen, unfortunately, stuck on the defensive lava hound. But if he can get that single inferno down, he's still in a pretty good spot. He freezes up and gets the single inferno down. He plays a couple of hogs in for the right side. Or no, there's a hog in Valkyries that came out of the flame finger. King is still alive there, taking for the Royal Champion. She continues to circle around the outside of the base. He's still got a freeze. He's still got 
of Rage, and he's got his RC ability. The Queen is surviving through the defensive heroes, and she'll continue on from there. He's got a, a headhunter there with the Warden and the Queen. To help him get through those grass skillies very, very quickly. And it looks like all defenses are down. The Queen with her ability still intact here. The Valkyries will clean up on the top side. And he's even got Wizards sprinkled around the outside edge. It is another triple here. We are perfect on both sides of this war. And these anti two star bases are not able to stop Gucci. Swag that freeze. Pass it back to Tribe. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Fluxy coming in for Tribe Gaming. A little poster boy from the start of the war there. Currently the highest hit rate player on the team for this season. Both of these teams undefeated. We can pull up some stats on Fluxy here in just a moment to see exactly how he's been doing this season that got him on the, the poster for the war. But uh, Kuching's heaviest hitter is also coming up with the defending world champion Mock from JX Tiger is on that team like you mentioned. So we'll see what uh, Fluxy can do here as he drives his way in with Super Dragons. He's got lots of raises, lots of rages, lots of red bombs are going off over from the right side. And he's able to get that scatter shot down. He'll engage the defensive world champion over there soon. He's got the Town Hall taken down there with that, uh, with the dragons in the area. He has the Stone Center with the other charge in the core of the base, though. Looks like a Dragon Runner. A couple of balloons pop out of there. Freeze up the Multi Inferno. Charge his way through the core. Lots of traps are going off in that area, though. He gets the Inferno, the single Inferno down, but he still needs to get to that multi Inferno and the defensive queen. That defensive queen is the primary target on the backside. He might be able to get the freeze to lock up the defensive queen and the multi Inferno and the Teslas all at the same time. If he gets that defensive queen down, he is home free from here. He's got the freeze. He locks into her. And does she drop? Another freeze, another freeze, another freeze. Oh, he doesn't use it. He's got his queen ability. She's beating through the wall. She's on her way in. The king pops the ability on that side. Where champion starts in on the bottom. And with the queen ability and the poison lock up the grass skellies. The freeze to lock up the heavy hitting defenses and an RC ability still intact. It looks like Fluxy will get it done for Tribe Gaming. And if we look back at the poster, we can see his stats here. Fluxy is currently three out of four triples for the four wars that they've done in the upper bracket here. But look at the average stars here between the two teams. We're looking at a 13 and a half star average there from Fuchi means they get a 13 or 14 star on average every other war. And Tribe Gaming just slightly below that. But uh, Mock, the MVP right now for Fuchi and our defending world champion from Jake's Tiger is currently perfect on the season. Pass it over, let's see what they got. IU Heart is live. Coming in with a Queen Charge and two Hawks. Starting off with the Blimp. The Blimp will sail into the Inferno compartment. Let's find a bunch of Teslas in there. Rage is up on the drop and we'll get this Inferno hopefully taken out here. But he got the CC pull and it looks like he does get that Inferno down. Does he get the Tesla as well? Nope, he gets the Mortar. That's fine. They can work with that. And he'll send in a couple of hogs to go take out this air defense as he rounds around it after the CC is distracted by the queen. Wall breaks the queen in. I don't think that's the wall that he intended to break open there, though. He's got another wall breaker, and he'll go into the single inferno compartment now. But I think that second wall breaker targeted the wall that I think he thought the first one would because of the void space. So he's just going to have to continue to fight his way in with one less wall break. And we'll see if he can handle it here. Or maybe he planned for that the whole time because he's got the jump spell. So I don't know if he needs any more wall breakers, but he dropped in a couple hogs in from the top corner. There's a claps in there. He's not really using these hogs as a bulk deployment. He's like sprinkling them in and using them like very surgical to control the pathing of the queen. Over on the right side, he puts in the warden and the king to power through the defensive heroes. It's in a headhunter. More headhunters. Lots of headers there. Pops that ward ability and his king ability. All those barbarians there. Rage up. And he will get the queen to take the town hall down while all that's going on. Not losing track of his queen charge here. Multitasking. He's got the road champion dropping it for the bottom side. Hogs deploy across the top. And we'll see how far the heroes can move here. But he's got the queen, the king converging to the middle of the base there. He gets the hogs to go inside the middle range of the scatter shot up top. And they're going to take it out. Everybody else moving south here. Pops that RC ability, takes out 
Plays backside defense. There's a couple hogs there. Worked with the champion. Bloom's coming to the backside there. Picking off the Tesla. RC still moving strong. Queen ability still intact. And it looks like he's got it completely under control. Takes out all the defenses up top. RC clears out in the bottom. And it's another triple. Both teams are perfect here as they fight to stay in the upper bracket and move on to the semifinals of the Clashers Cup. But guys, six triples. Six triples. And I don't know. Do you think we'll see a perfect war on both sides? That'd be wild. And we're off again. Rikiris from Tribe Gaming will try to get it done with a Sui Lalo on this one here. Got a couple Skelda spells. Double poison. A drop in. And full of balloons and a baby dragon in for the top corner there. We're gonna form out the funnel. Dealt with the Tesla farm. Just blanketing that area with a handful of balloons. He's got, not gonna have as many balloons for later on. But he gets the funnel form for the queen and she'll continue to work her way in. Skeleton spell out in front of her, giving her a little bit of protection there. But that expo is locked on and he's hanging on though. Her unicorn is keeping her topped off. She can use an invisibility or a freeze to, to recover there if she needs to, but I don't think she needs to. Locks on to the town hall, pops her ability, and will take it down. Her ability also transfers the CC over to the Royal Champion. Poison up the Headhunters. Does he need to freeze that? Royal Champion gets the Inferno down. He does go invisible with the Royal Champion, transferring the Lava Hound over to the King. RC pops her ability, but then immediately turns back over to the Lava Hound. Now this does not get the scatter or the Eagle Artillery down, but did take out a couple of the Battle Builders in the middle of the base. The Artillery is somehow still being repaired. I don't know how. All the battle builders died there. They should have stopped repairing it, unless these other ones can reach it. Maybe that. Maybe he's up two up top. Yeah, it was. It was. All right. Well, he's gonna get the scatter shot engaged here. He's got the road champion still alive. She's gonna get forced to the middle of the base by the Lalo coming up to the bottom. She will rage up. He will go ahead and freeze up the defensive king. The key. The, how is he keeping track of this king in the middle of the Lalo? The king is going to drop. The road champion survives, and she continues to march across the top of the base. He still has a ward ability, still attacked, but he loses his road champion now. Marching his way through the Multi Inferno. Still has the haste. Why is he not using the haste and the ward ability? I don't know. But he'll pop it now. Maybe he's waiting for traps. The red bombs. There we go. That's why. That's why he held the ward ability. Huge amounts of red bombs go off in the blues. And it still takes them all down as the tornado trap delayed their strike. And now he's potentially going to miss this. Got a lot of time. Gets into the expo. The warden's tanking it. He needs that warden to survive and keep his damage output going. He needs the dragon rider to pass up the warden. He's got a lot of minions and pups here. He's got the dragon rider still dishing out damage. And the warden's still dishing out damage as well. I see what he was trying to do. It didn't pan out exactly like I'm sure he imagined it. But he tried to hold on that warden ability for the barrage of red bombs that all struck him. But apparently he didn't need those blues. And Tribe Gaming has a fourth one on the board. Chen is in with a queen charge lalo a couple of hogs here i see a flame finger being used i see he has one selected at the moment but he'll draw some teslas onto the right side of the base here trying to get the full cc pull here did he get a full cc pull got a wall break for the queen to make her way down to the defensive queen and delayed her healers for quite a while now He'll uh, put them down now, but a Tesla is in the area there, pinging away to his healers. He does not want the queen to go into that compartment. He wants her to continue to go south. Keep it on that air defense there. That air defense could prove to be a nuisance if it targets the healers as he makes his way into that area. Not deployed that flame finger yet. Archer down in the bottom corner. King and the Grand Warden deploy on the far left side there with the queen. The Royal Champion joins with them after the Queen gets the defensive Queen under control. They can definitely get this threat off of the Queen's flank here, get that air defense down. But he'll freeze up the single Inferno, protect his King, pops that King ability, compare that with the Warden, and there we go. It's that air defense down, the Royal Champion deploys with them. You'll continue all across to the middle of the base here. The King is circling north here, but I think the Log Launcher will get the walls open and get him to force back to the middle. That doesn't happen. The Witcher will stay safe, though, all the way to the core. The Multi-Inferno will go down to the Royal Champion, and the CC troops there will come out in just a moment. He rages up the Royal Champion with the Yetis to pop out of there. He'll get the other Multi-Inferno. The Queen's still doing good work over on the bottom side, but she has to get a wall break 
and make your way across to the town hall. But look at these Yetis and the Warden still working across to the town hall compartment, working into the expo, and they take the expo down. That leaves very little damage on the back end. And now we can get a small Lalo to go in with the Warden. No, he doesn't have a Warden. So we got Cannon, Grab Expo, keep an eye onto these headhunters while he tries to get the Royal Champion on defense down because she might be a nuisance for him here. He'll rage up. There goes the headhunters. The Grand Expo locks on and do they get her? Do they get her? Keep an eye on her. Keep an eye on her. She's down. She's down. The rage gets the headhunters through before the Grand Expo can take them out. The queen steps her way to the town hall. He's got a freeze. He's got an invisibility and we've got another triple on the board and I don't know what's going to happen this war, but both teams have not slipped up yet. And it's going to come down to the final set of attacks here. Double perfect war incoming? Possible. It's possible. A Chen leaves house. Oh my gosh. The average attack time is exactly tied as well. Are you kidding me? <laughs> they are literally exactly tied in every way. And here we go. Here we go. The final attack from Tribe Gaming. Nebrox is live. They, if they both triple, it'll come down to who does it faster. He's going with Super Dragons. I'll we'll try to go for some speed. We saw how fast the Super Dragon attack went for Fluxy. We'll see if it can happen again here for Nebrox. But he also must triple. Do not give Huchin an opportunity and force them to go fast on their attack. He'll put in the king to work his way into the Eagle Artillery. He's already forming out the funnel up at the top edge of the base there. Wizard down there. Super Dragon is deployed directly into the sweeper, into the scatter shot, and into two defensive heroes. His king and queen will probably reach across and get the defensive queen out of the way. No single infernos in that area of the base, so they'll continue to coast there for quite a while. The CC pull won't happen for a while, so maybe the Super Dragons can get to it and destroy the CC before he has an opportunity to pull a Lava Hound out. I see no CC troops deployed right now, so it is very likely Lava Hound. Looks like we got Super Minions dropping out of that blimp. We'll nuke out that single Inferno. Lock onto the Town Hall, taking them both down, and it looks like the Town Hall is secured. He doesn't have drawn the Lava Hound over to the right side. And the Super Dragon's chasing it. It will lock on to his king. Where is his queen? Is his queen still alive in there? Unicorn is onto the dragon right now, so I assume that the queen went down at some point there. Saw this Royal Champion on standby, though. Got the majority of the major threats out of the base here. So far, time is looking really, really good on this one here. It's gonna be a race of the clock here for this finish. He just kind of coasts his way through. He's got plenty of spell support here, but he'll rage up for a champion, freeze up as he makes his way to the scatter shot. Lots of incoming damage right there, but he's got the another freeze there, and he's got additional freezes even past that. Might he honestly? I feel like he should have just popped his RC ability early just to thin out that heavy compact area in that bottom compartment, but he's starting to lose Super Dragons. He lost his king. The ward is still working in the middle. Pops his RC ability. I think he's going to make it through. The RC still has plenty of force here. The Super Dragon clear at the bottom. He's only approaching the two minute mark right here. The ward takes a black mind, slow him down even further. Frees up to put the Royal Champion through, and it is a triple. It's a perfect war for Tribe Gaming, but they're not out of this yet. It was fast. It was very, very fast. But if uh, Uchin's final attacker, if Mach can get his attack done in less than 2 minutes and 10 seconds and triple, then they will move on to the semifinals. Here we go. Moment of truth. Mach, defending world champion, last played in JX Tiger, now playing for Fuchin. Coming in with a queen charge into hogs, ice golems, and golems, and he has to finish this attack in two minutes and ten seconds. The queen will begin her path into the base, and we'll see how fast they can clear it out, how well he can protect every single one of his troops here, because he need every little bit that he has here to speed this up, to go fast enough to make this happen. But he also maybe was banking on tribe gaming missing the last attack and going for an attack that he felt more comfortable with. It's hard to say right now, but he's already used up the first 40 seconds and that timer is ticking away fast as this queen continues to work her way into the base. 
Get the defensive king down. And he can't delay too long here. He puts the king down the line. He needs to get things moving. He needs to get things to develop very quickly here. He can still pull this through. But he's got about a minute left to close it out. If he doesn't get it in the next minute, and Tribe Gaming is going to be moving on to the semifinals. Looks like he's got golems and ice golems collapsing around the left side of the base there. Wizards deploying down. He still has his hogs on standby. The queen makes her approach towards the middle of the base there. He's got the king collapsing in heavy at the bottom there. The warden supporting there. He's got the header down for the defensive queen. There's the CC pull. Headers go over to the king and to the queen, but he quickly snipes those off and continues on. Same thing here. Working on the right side. I don't think he's going to make it in time. I don't think he's going to make it in time. I think he... Still might triple this, and we'll see if he can at least get the tie. But the timer is ticking away, and with only a couple... He's, he's not... It's, it's a win. It's a win. Mock. I think he must have banked on Tribe Gaming. Missing their last attack and just going for this one, because this is still a beautiful attack, guys. This is a very, very well-executed, well structured attack here and he is ripping it to shreds he's got the freeze to lock out the single inferno rc will pick off the town hall king's still alive on the outside hogs come out of the siege barrier or the flame flinger over the right side and we'll clear that out as well and he will finish it out here very quickly but not fast enough the so goblins will finish off the storages and the queen will break through that wall and it is going to be a double perfect war but can you imagine Putting up a perfect war against Tribe and then still losing. That's what happened here, guys. Double perfect war, both sides, but the fastest attack was done by Tribe and they win it by five seconds on average attack time. And they will move on to the semifinals. GG.